2013 Kia Soul. It was brought to me because it's uh, running rough. They wanted me to check and see why uh, it was running the way that it is. First things first, I can tell you right off the bat that it is misfiring. That is why it's running rough. I quickly just pulled it in and scanned it. And based off of the trouble code that I pulled and the way that it feels, I am set up to do a relative compression because also uh, someone's been in there and I can see all the coils have been replaced. So obviously ignition components have been done. Before I go any further, I want to know the condition of the engine. And again, like I said, we have a trouble code for a misfire. So there we go. Like I said, I quickly just pulled it in. First thing I did, scan it based on this trouble code being that it's active for cylinder number three and that someone's already put in all these lovely uh, Duralast coils in it and I am going to go ahead and just quickly perform a relative compression anytime I have a misfiring vehicle regardless of whatever the first thing I do is a relative compression that gives me a good starting point on whether I need to go further or not. So the scope is set up. I've only got the amp clamp and ignition sink on one. And we'll just crank it over. See what that looks like. See if we need to go any further. <laughs> All right, and right off the bat, hopefully you can hear that. But the cranking noise is uneven, which already tells me there is a low compression problem. And we already know it's going to be on cylinder 3 based off trouble code. So I am synced on red, which uh, because of interference it makes the blue shoot up, which is the battery trace. But as you can see, fine order is one, three, four, two, back to one, three, four, two, back to one. So the missing rising hump, meaning the missing compression or low compression, is cylinder three, which does confirm trouble code, which confirms why coils and I'm sure plugs have been replaced with no fix. So at this point, we can stop, we can call the customer and give them an accurate 100% diagnosis as to what is going on and what will be needed. Okay, so because of that, just out of curiosity, I ended up doing the same test but adding two more channels. Green channel is the intake manifold, the yellow is in the crankcase. Now I want to now the reason why I will do that is because I want to find where the loss of compression basically is going. Is it being fed into the crankcase or is it being fed back up into the intake manifold? If it were to be fed back to either place, you would see a very oddball standing guy that will shoot up in pressure and will look very distinctive along the pattern compared to the other cylinders just the same way that this empty slot looks very distinctive in the relative compression trace for the uh, starter current you would have to see that or find that in these one of these other twos if it was being fed into one of these other twos now all of these and all of these are pretty consistent and nothing is jumping out so as of right now I am gonna say it's not going into the crankcase because all of these are pretty much the same and it's not going into the intake manifold because I am NOT seeing a huge uh, rise in pressure or distinctively higher rise in pressure in any of those humps so obviously We've uh, gone forward and removed the cylinder head. 
So one thing, like I said, there wasn't a huge pressure spike when the low cylinder was low. The, there wasn't a huge pressure spike in the intake manifold when the low cylinder was on compression. If you see that in the intake manifold, when the low cylinder is on compression, then you can attribute uh, an intake valve issue. Being that we didn't see anything on the intake valve in the intake manifold pattern, and we didn't see anything in the crankcase, and yes, it can go into the uh, coolant system, but being that they drove this here from their location and it did not overheat, there's no signs of coolant spewing, and I can grab the coolant hoses and kind of squeeze them. They're not overpressurized. I can probably assume it's not going into the cylinder uh, coolant jacket. All that is pretty much left is that guy there. Now obviously I can, as you saw in the cylinder block, I've cleaned off and I've cleaned off here the cylinder head just to get a good view. But we do have a piece of the exhaust valve missing. So we uh, obviously can go forward with repairing this and restoring compression and avoiding having to replace an engine. Okay, so I wanted to just quickly get you a shot after uh, proving out what the uh, issue was with the mechanical low compression. Uh, vehicle is now repaired. It's up and running. Obviously, no more misfires. We were able to rectify the problem. So based on what we saw with the scope data, we are able to determine again the exhaust valve and that is what it looks like as far as the size of the uh, burnt hole so new valve seal new valve no more misfires uh, vehicles up and running it's repaired no more misfires but oddly enough This guy here uh, came in. It's actually the same owner. Uh, purchased this one as well. And it is running misfiring. And I can only give you one guess as to what is wrong with it. What the problem is. And even which cylinder. Just like the one over there. Cylinder 3 misfire. And it is a burnt exhaust valve. I don't think I'm going to go through recording everything. It just... It runs, idles bad, misfire, dead hole. I did the same exact uh, testing, but I actually added a few more channels, I believe. And uh, I might go over just the scope data and show you what that looks like. What I can show you is what the exhaust valve, it's actually in its, uh, off the seat, it's open. But you can see that there is a bigger chunk missing out of this one. And I think it's just one exhaust valve. Because the other, I believe, is intact. This one, obviously has a chunk missing so same deal but it looks like more of the uh, valve is missing but misfire due to uh, low compression cylinder 3 okay so first and foremost I apologize and this is where you guys should always try to save all your captures uh, as soon as you take them because for me, this was the capture from that Kia Soul that I initially did. And I did not save it for whatever reason. And I almost was not able to make this in order to be able to share what I ended up finding. So that's the first thing. Second 
this is basically a snapshot from the video of the scope capture that I had taken and was uh, explaining a little bit of. It's again nothing crazy, it's basic, it's your blue traces relative compression, the red was ignition sink, uh, this yellow was the crankcase pressure, green was intake manifold for the uh, intake poles. And again, as what, what I was trying to explain, when there was a dead hole, we didn't see anything crazy on the intake trace, like a high pressure rise, or any high pressure rise on the uh, crankcase trace either. This is a bad exhaust valve in cylinder number three of a four cylinder engine. This here is an actual save scope capture of that second vehicle that I showed you with a, again, burned exhaust valve. Think about that and look at both of these. Mainly here. See that? Now, basic again, blue is relative compression. We have the missing hump from cylinder 3, here is ignition sink from cylinder 1. Same exact thing, missing hump for number 3, there we go. Same bad result, a burnt <laughs> exhaust valve. And this is why I wanted to basically put this together to show you guys and to help explain and again as always to help you guys keep this information in the back of your mind to not make incorrect calls when you're trying to diagnose with pressure waveforms. <clears throat> so the big, so the elephant in the room is the intake manifold trace. So why do we have an, an abnormality, an anomaly, a high pressure looking spike or, or rise in the intake manifold when we know we have a bad exhaust valve. And here it's pretty consistent, no rise in pressure. And again, forgive me, it's just a uh, screen capture picture, but obviously I can't zoom the scope capture, but here you can tell it's, and here is your cylinder one, cylinder one, and it's all pretty even waves or pulls, pulses. There's no uneven rhythmic pattern. It's consistent with the same thing going on. And there is that rhythmic abnormal pattern. Okay, and here we have a capture of the vehicle with the anomaly on the intake trace. And I have in cylinder 3, in cylinder 1, intake trace. And then uh, this one here is exhaust trace, which I'll explain that one later. The thing that we are concentrating on, or I want to explain, is the things that can make the intake trace go up. We have the possibility of high positive pressure being introduced into the intake manifold from a leaking intake valve can cause the pressure to rise and cause an anomaly in the trace. I've shown videos on that in, in, on previous repairs to prove that out. Also something that can cause a rise is a delay of intake pulls will also let the pressure rise until there's a pull occurring that can cause an anomaly like this which again I do have other videos that prove that out and also a slowdown in RPM in a dead hole can create anomalies in the intake trace as well and if you look at this and again, if you're trying to learn, you can confuse this from 
this purple, which is cylinder one, going on top that center on the in cylinder trace, and in time correlating to each other, you can mistakenly make a call of possibly saying that intake valve on cylinder one is bleeding off into the intake manifold because during compression the pressure seemed to rise when cylinder one was on compression. Again, it's not a bad hypothesis, but you have to, again, like I've explained before, you have to rationalize everything that is going on in the engine all, all around. Um, which in this case, this is not the problem or the cause of the rise of uh, pressure levels here in the manifold. And the, the other factor that can cause a pressure rise, what appears to be a pressure rise in the intake manifold trace, can also be due to... So if we come up here, this is cylinder 3, we'll leave it there. So cylinder 3 compression going towards TDC, cylinder 3 compression TDC. Um, here's your expansion, exhaust valve opens, here's your exhaust stroke, and here would be the intake stroke before the valve closes and compression uh, is created. Now, uh, yes, in the relative compression, there was a dead hole, but it's not a complete dead hole because obviously we are building some compression, and we know we have a leaking, uh, uh, we have a hole in the exhaust valve, so it's able to build some compression, but obviously pressure is lost through that valve, so uh, not all compression is built pressure, not all pressure is, is built correctly. But back to this creation of rise in pressure levels, the last factor or the other factor that can also cause this is a leak. A leak occurring during an intake pull if the pull is not in a sealed cylinder, then it cannot bring the levels all the way down. Now, this is what's going on here. So because this pressure rise in levels is, we can tell because this pressure rise in level is occurring during the intake stroke of the bad cylinder with the hole in the exhaust valve. So basically what is going on is the piston for cylinder 3 is going down during the intake stroke and since we have a leak through the exhaust valve it cannot have a strong pull and it looks and, and basically we lose um, vacuum, strong vacuum in the cylinder which then is a weaker vacuum in the intake manifold and it loses basically kind of the battle and higher pressure starts to take over because the pull isn't as strong and then so the level rises and it rises all due to a leak on the exhaust valve during the intake stroke. So this anomaly is caused not by positive pressure being introduced, it's not by a delayed in intake valve opening, uh, not by crankshaft speed change, but due to a leak in a sealed cylinder not being able to create a strong enough pull and so the pressure level rises. And so that is what we are seeing here. But why not did we see it here if we know we have the same thing going on? We saw it with the camera. Uh, on the on the one that has the anomaly, and then obviously when the head was off on the uh, first one, which is this one, uh, both have burnt exhaust valves, and this one does not have that anomaly, like this one. So so why is that? And that is basically what I was 
wanting to explain because I found it super interesting and the whole reason behind this is now I saved these these are the exhaust valves um, let's see so here on my left is the first one the uh, Kia Soul without the anomaly and here on my right is the uh, the second one that does have the anomaly now I just found it crazy that that if you can tell it is due to a size difference in the amount of material gone that is causing that anomaly can you I mean, I was just blown away when I saw that. Um, this much more little bit of material gone and missing compared to this one is causing this anomaly and making it look totally different from the other capture that does not have an anomaly in the intake. I don't know about you guys, but for me, at least, I thought that was pretty cool and, and interesting. And just every time you think you know something well or, or have seen it all or, or, you know, a curveball gets thrown at you. And I knew and these cars came in back to back, same thing, same problem. And then I was confused or I needed to figure out and explain that why one had it and why the other did not and basically that's what it boiled down to now I did mention about the exhaust trace and on this one I did not take one or have a picture of it but I did see a difference there so we know that this is compression for cylinder 3 the one with the bad uh, exhaust valve so we've explained this this rise and then on the exhaust trace you can actually see an anomaly there too on this vehicle now I hope this comes up on the screen well okay so I changed the color to hopefully come off better on on screen here so here is cylinder 3 on compression and compression. This is the exhaust trace. So uh, I've made the channel display when voltage goes up, pressure goes up, and then downward travel voltage is um, vacuum. And then so if you can tell here at these points, when cylinder 3 goes top dead center, you can see that there's higher pressure pulse um, in the exhaust tailpipe and we can visually see that and that is because on compression it is instead of switching over normal coming down it is the pistons being pushed up into the cylinder and it's feeding pressurizing or what would be pressurized air or pressure out the exhaust and it's coming out and you're seeing it there at the end of the uh, tailpipe with a higher peak point in the exhaust trace. So then there's two patterns that you can look at and hopefully try to make some sense. But it would take a lot of, uh, it, it takes a lot of time to try to not make the wrong call for the intake trace you have to again take gather a lot of other information um, I mean this it's a good guide it's a starting point it lets you see there's mechanical problems but to get an accurate you know answer or diagnosis you have to do further testing and and make sense of all the other scope captures that you gather so um, all of these tied in together just help answer what's going on with all the waveforms that you gather so that's pretty much it not much more crazy to explain um, again these 
two vehicles could have just very easily been, you know, quickly diagnosed. Uh, again, relative compression gives you the answer right away when you need to make a call for, um, you know, what to sell a customer, basically, or what situation you guys are going to be in. But I, for myself, just needed to find out and figure out how can two of the same failed things cause two distinctively different patterns on the intake trace. So um, that's basically what I came up with was, and that's the only thing that was different. And I know 100% that it's due to a leak because, and not due to an RPM change that is causing that or positive pressure, obviously we know that, but because both have uh, the both have the RPM inconsistent or the consistent inconsistency of the RPM change and one is affected and the other is not and the only th and it's in the same cylinder so uh, the only thing that is different again from the two is the size of the leak when it's on its intake pull and it should be a sealed cylinder that right there is enough of a size difference that it can throw you for a loop on that intake trace i don't mean to beat this one down like you know a beating a dead horse type of deal but imagine this being a bigger sized engine more than four cylinders a more expensive deal and needing to make a correct call or if you're trying to find the bank to bank deal and you have to decipher from what's causing that from is it uh, from a cylinder on top dead center or this this and that um, this is another huge huge factor that I guess you're gonna have to keep in mind um, that can cause that trace so again uh, as always thank you for watching coming along I hope you understood the information I'm trying to portray and explain and this is all to try to spread good good word when you uh, take these captures please keep in mind that there's many different factors that can cause a trace to do different things and on this one keep in mind I guess size does matter so thank you for watching uh, that's it for this one uh, until the next one I'll see you then